before we begin, I think we're just going to have some words from um, NICE's CEO, Jack Kazoos. Um, he's going to go over some important new updates, and then we'll go into some public comments and then some board comments. Thank you, Ms. Enright. I appreciate it very much, and uh, uh, appreciate everybody being here today. Um, as you know, our uh, uh, long-serving chairman, Sheldon Schrenkel, uh resigned his position to take another position uh, as a, in, in another capacity within the county. Uh, we thank him for his long service uh, in volunteerism. Uh, I think he did a, a very good job in keeping us uh, on point. Uh, as far as uh, our services go, uh, and uh, I've given him my thanks and appreciation, so I appreciate that very much. Uh, today is a really, uh, we're going to talk about a few different things, uh, some, some fairly simple housekeeping issues, uh, but I want to make sure that we get together on a, on a uh, more uh, uh, set schedule only because, hey, we can now that uh, we're, we're somewhat over the, the, the COVID restrictions. We'll still be more careful. We'll still space chairs out. We've got masks available outside uh, and hand sanitizer. So today we're going to go over our quarterly scorecard. Uh, the document in front of you, which is the Transit Asset Management Plan and the Transit Agency Safety Plan. Uh, we'll have service updates, uh, funding outlook, uh, and the, uh, we'll, we can talk about the potential fare, uh, MTA fare increase, but there's not much to talk about at this point. So uh, we'll just get right to it. My presentation is relatively short. Um, our scorecard uh, for last quarter, uh, performance in general was, was very good. Uh, our on-time performance uh, finished out the year just under 90% at 88.48. Uh, we are going through a audit right now on our numbers. Uh, it looks like that number actually will end up being at 91% for the fourth quarter. Uh, so we're very happy with that. Uh, we'll continue to push that through the next year uh, and look for ways to actually hopefully end at 95% on-time performance on our bus routes uh, for next year. Um, there, are, there are some possible ways to get that done. We have a, 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 some good an analysis to, to, to make that happen. Uh, our missed pullouts, uh, percentage of missed pullouts, uh, were higher than we'd like it, uh, but uh, did not raise itself to a, uh, a penalty. We hit within the goal uh, of, of uh, uh, within the parameters. Um, missed pullouts uh, could, could mean a lot of different things, but uh, the bottom line is that bus did not get out of the, the, the apron on time. Uh, so we count that as a miss. Uh, we hit our accident numbers, which is excellent. Our accident numbers are, uh, again, leading the Northeast. Um, they're, uh, they're extremely low uh, and continue to be driven down uh, by our safe practices. I'm pretty proud of that. On the paratransit side, the call answer ratio uh, continues to climb up to where we need it to be. Uh, I would always like to have it at 95%, so we still have a little bit uh, to go, but we're above our goal. Uh, On-time performance, again, climbed uh, a little bit uh, to 83.83. Again, we'd like to get 85% on our on-time performance in paratransit. Uh, we continue to work that. Um, missed pullouts, again, uh, didn't, uh, didn't hit us a reward or a penalty. Uh, but again, on paratransit, just to be clear, uh, no one missed a trip. The bus just didn't pull out on time uh, for whatever reason. Um, and then accident ratio. Climbed a little bit higher than I'd like it to in paratransit, but um, but again, uh, still within our parameters and still within uh, national average. And then our productivity also stayed very high at 1.41 clients per trip. So uh, overall, not a bad performance for the quarter, um, and it continues our run of, of uh, seeing continuous incremental improvement over time in our performance. Uh, we continue to work those numbers uh, continuously throughout the. The, the, the year. So what you have in front of you uh, is two documents that we will uh, turn into the FTA. The first is the Transit Asset Management Plan, and it's a, a plan that has to be developed by every agency that takes federal funds, owns and operates, and manages capital assets uh, used to provide federal transportation. It really just shows 
uh, all the assets we own, uh, and when I say we own, I, I, this Nassau County owns the assets, but how we inventory those assets and how we take care of those assets. Uh, things like PMIs on vehicles and, and uh, uh, any other uh, assets that we own. The second part of it is the, the public transit agency safety plan. Again, uh, it's our safety plan on how we approach safety issues and uh, how we manage safety as a system uh, continuously over time. Uh, we look for risks, we uh, mitigate the risks, we prioritize the risks based on, on their, their potential safety impact. So uh, how we, we, we do that, and that's what's in the plan there. So what I'm asking for now is really just the board's acknowledgement that they received the plan. Uh, and uh, uh, if, if at the end, Ms. Enright, I'll ask for that, that acknowledgement to go in record. So let's talk a little bit about the budget. Um, this is not a new, uh, a new uh, topic that we talk about every year at the same time. Uh, as we remember, we go back and we start in September, really, uh, starting to work with the county uh, and providing a operating budget for the following year to the county based on uh, our uh, projections on fair collection or ridership or fair collection. Uh, the cost of uh, increases in health care and fuel and everything else, uh, we give that to the county and it goes through the county uh, budget process, um, including NIFA. So right now we are kind of on the cusp of uh, January, February, obviously. Nothing's been changed. Uh, what makes up the majority of our budget is what the state uh, uh, gives us an operating system. It's called STOA. So we're going to make some assumptions into the March budget, uh, or into the March time frame. Um, and what we'll do is we'll get together in March, we'll make assumptions, we'll vote on the, um, the budget as it is, and then we'll go forward from there. Uh, as, a, again, we, we talked about in the past, uh, there is no plans for reduced budgets or reduced service at all. Uh, we're um, uh, well managed by our county partners. Uh, and, and we've done a good job with efficiency, so we, we should continue where we are. There's no reason to think we wouldn't. So uh, we'll get, like I said, we'll get together in March. The final stolen number will come out that last week of March. So we'll implement that budget starting April 1st. Okay. I want to give everybody a service update in our riderships. We projected at the end of this year we would be at 80% rider recovery, and that's about where we we're about 80%. It fluctuates a little bit. In the fall, it always goes up, uh, regardless of COVID or not. It always goes up in the fall, and then it kind of squeaks down a little bit uh, through December and, uh, and, and January. But you can see in the blue, those were our numbers from last year. And in, uh, in orange, uh, at the top, are our numbers for this year. So uh, we're at about 1.5-ish. Uh, so we're, we're, we're at about 80% recovery, like I said. Um, and, and uh, we're, we're happy with that. It's, it's, it's leading the metro area recovery on bus transit. Uh, anyone that touches New York City, um, Westchester ourselves, New Jersey Transit, we're right about at the top there. So um, that's good. Uh, people seem to be coming back on the vehicles. We are seeing some changes in the way people ride, but overall, again, still coming back strong. We'll anticipate probably at 85%, we'll be conservative, and we'll anticipate an 85% recovery for next year, or maybe 90, um, but it uh, depends on what the colleges do and what kind of uh, uh, incoming student load that they take on. That's a lot of our ridership. It also depends a lot on uh, what the Long Island Railroad recovers. Um, you know, about 5% of that non-recovery, so, you know, if we took it, is, is non, uh, is riders not hitting Long Island Railroad anymore. So our, 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 our connections to Long Island Railroad aren't as important. I'll say it that way, that, that sounds like an understatement, but they, they have, those, those riders haven't come back full time yet. Uh, so we'll see how that kind of uh, develops over the next year or so. Service updates, uh, happy to say we've received 33 new Gillick buses just in the last 60 days. We're processing those buses. They always have to go through a, a DOT inspection again. Uh, they have to be uh, licensed and, and, and on the road. So those are getting slowly put into service. They're replacing some of the uh, 
the older uh, the older vehicles. So we're going to have a fairly new fleet here. Um, Fifty percent of the fleet is, is relatively new, so we're happy about that. The new Gillettes have been received very well by the drivers and passengers. Uh, so the, the from what I understand from drivers, they're a very smooth uh, ride, uh, which is excellent. So um, so we're happy about that. Uh, no issues. The uh, electric buses, some of you know about the BEV electric buses, uh, battery electric buses, the six new flyers. They've been delayed uh, until Q1 sometime. We're supposed to receive the first one in November, and that's been pushed back. Uh, supply chain issues uh, have kind of, you know, have kind of really hinged on that, and really kind of delayed us a bit on that. Uh, no issues. Uh, we got the portable charging stations delivered, uh, and it's, and they're awaiting installation now. So we'll, we're going to figure out something to plug it into. So these uh, portable charging stations look like short squat refrigerators. Uh, they're on rollers. Uh, so we roll them to wherever garage needs them. As a bus is being serviced overnight, they plug in. Uh, and it's a slow charge, though. So uh, I believe, I have to look at the specs on it, but I believe it takes about six hours to only charge about 50% of that. So it, it's not an ideal solution. Uh, ADB chargers, which are the phase one chargers, those are large chargers with two charging hoses on them. Uh, those have been delivered to us. Uh, they're awaiting the, the civil work, the ground work, to be able to put those chargers in the ground. Again, uh, no real rush there again, because we have nothing to plug into them yet. So, uh, so those, will, those, will, those will be installed, but we're, we're Everything's coming together, and we'll meet up on a, on, a, on a date here sometime soon in Q1. We'll have those buses on the road, kind of shake them out, kind of understand what we can really expect out of them as far as range goes. And they'll be um, inserted into regular certs. Uh, there's not necessarily initially going to be a separate route for them initially. So. Excuse me, Jack. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Um, how much of the fleet is anticipated to become electric? buses in the grand plan? Well, in the grand plan, the first phase, we think we're going to get up to about 10% of the fleet. We, we remember, we have to remember that we are all CNG now, so our uh, emissions is already 90% less than a diesel bus. Uh, so ideally, we, we, we would, it's, it's somewhat difficult to, to kind of mix the two fleets, but ideally we'd get to about 10% and then decide from there what the next step is, what's the next technology, that sort of thing. Has anybody communicated with the, uh, the fire department um, as far as the fire marshal? Because we just had a major presentation from the Hicksville Fire Department that they are vehemently opposed to these kind of vehicles because if they go on fire, they require so much water that let's say you have a car with batteries and it's in your driveway. They now have a hood that they will throw on the car, drag it out to the street, yeah. and let it burn itself out because it requires too much. Yeah. And it'll take about 12 hours for a car to finish burning. Yeah, so, so yes, we have already started reaching out to different uh, uh, fire departments. Once the, we have a vehicle here, we have a whole safety plan that we'll be handing the fire departments. We'll invite them here. Or we'll take the bus there so that they can learn more about it. Uh, like Hicksville and Hempstead are probably the two yep. most, uh, media yep. and Hicksville is, they're really, they're telling people don't get electric vehicles. Well, uh, yeah. I'm just saying yeah. that was the presentation we got that they yeah. are so negative on it because when it happens, and it's, just, it's not a foreign thing, for the battery to go awry. Yeah, yeah, they do have a lot of safety. The buses have a lot of safety uh, cutoffs and circuit cutoffs that that will hopefully mitigate those issues. But yes, we're concerned about it, and mm -hmm. and we've gone through the training, and we'll go through training, and, and we'll we'll help we'll help train first responders. I tease them if it's cooking, they're going to bring the hot dogs and the marshmallows and watch it. I'll, I'll, I'll remember that. <laughs> uh, so let's go to service announcements for the winter schedule. Uh, there are just a few, real quickly, um, some, some additional service on the N24 uh, uh, on Sunday, some additional service on the N43 on Sunday, uh, improving headways, uh, especially in the, in the peaks. The Sunday peaks are a little bit different, but 
uh, but, but at least it shortens the headways on everything on 24 and 43. Uh, everyday schedules, um, more consistencies and times on the 4, the 6, the 40, 41, um, on the overnights, so that it, every overnight schedule doesn't look different. You know, we can be more consistent on those when we can, uh, and, and that makes it makes it easier. We want we want our schedules to be easy, right? Especially on the larger routes. Um, as we've moved to headways on the four and the six and, and some other routes, it's you don't really need a paper schedule. You just go out, and in the peak, there's usually a bus within every ten minutes, if not more, and it makes it much easier to do that. We're trying to get rid of some of that rider anxiety about not knowing when the bus is going to show up and, and everything around that. Um, part of that rider anxiety is uh, understanding that not all our riders speak English proficiently. Um, so we understand that uh, and we're moving toward uh, rolling out things like a wordless timetable or wordless schedule or wordless signing and all using icons. Um, so that's that's part of it. There's also some new technology that we're looking at that uh, is a QR code that automatically translates anything that you flash on. So no matter what, what language uh, you use comfortably, you're able to read what we put out. Our website already translates into, I think, 180 languages. Um, but we understand that, uh, that not everybody is comfortable communicating in English. And, and this could help uh, in, in a lot of cases. And then, um, happy to report, after a long wait, uh, we had kiosk, digital kiosks in Mineola. Unfortunately, the company that supplied them uh, didn't support the technology any longer. And all those kiosks had to come down. Unfortunately, that happened right at the peak of COVID. So, uh, trying to source uh, technology, especially digital screens, and the, the uh, software and hardware that has to go into that was very difficult. These guys got installed about a month ago in Mineola. They look 100% better than the old ones uh, and really are the technology that we're going to go to. Uh, in uh, at Rosa Park Center Transit Center, we have the kind of the bold kind of screens. Mm -hmm. We will go to this type of screen that's much easier to read at a distance. Uh, eventually, when those are out of their useful life. So we've really learned a lot by uh, putting these together. They also have uh, service reports and service alerts at the bottom of them. And they do have a QR code also at the bottom so that you can flag that QR code. So uh, our team worked very diligently to get those installed, and I thought they came out great. Um, I do want to just recap again, Rosa Park Stemson Transit Center. Uh, we are on what we will call uh, the final phase, there's never a final phase, so there's many people going through here all the time. We're going to be updating it all the time. But it will, once it's done and the final phase, quote unquote, is starting here pretty soon, uh, will include new terrazzo floors, uh, new uh, wall surfaces, uh, new doors. Uh, uh, so it's, it's, it's got a real cool feel to it. We're actually also redoing and supplying the uh, the convenience store, a whole new store. We're going to give them fixtures so that it fits in the rest of the aesthetic in the uh, in the area. So it's the whole look is much sleeker and much more modern, uh, and it really I think it's really going to look good. Uh, we'll start that work shortly on this phase. Uh, there will be some disruption. It'll be the same way we did the paint on the interior, uh, and that is we'll we'll block off sections at a time because the floors have to be ripped up and poured and, and, and through that. But uh, our depot manager there will help manage the process, uh, and our team here will help communicate the process to everybody so that there's minimal disruption. But there will be some disruption. So, um, And that's, that's my presentation. So uh, uh, again, fairly short. At this time, I, I'd like the, the record to show that I have given the two uh, documents to the board and that the board acknowledges receiving the documents. Yeah, we received those. Everyone here has a hard copy, and as well as people who are not here with us, they received an electronic copy. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. I'm ready to receive any questions from either yeah, the board or, or the, the, the public at this time? Um, I came here today, and I had to, in preparation for that other event, meet somebody from the county executive office 
who decided to hand me a complaint from people at UPS over here. Mm -hmm. I don't know the run number. He didn't know the run number, but he says on Saturdays, they're very frustrated by an every two hour service. Now, this is what the complaint went into the county executive's office, and I'm just relaying it. Got it. I don't have any more information. I asked him, do you have who, do you have when, do you have a bus number, do you have a route number? And it's just, you know, it's, it's like when you want something, you need the people that give you information. Now I'm a carpenter without a saw. Okay, well, I'll, I'll call uh, uh, the county executive's office and, and sit you in affairs and I'll see if they I can went Pierre and uh, the assistant Pierre was the one who was here, so okay. he was dealing with it. All right, cool. Thank you. Any other comments? Questions? All I have to be Mr. Jack and, and, and quote queers all the time. You know, because you guys, it's always progress. Yeah. And look at the scoreboard today. I'm happy with the scoreboard. On, on time, the performance is good. And ridership, 80%. But like you said, if you can bring it up to 85, Hopefully that will, that will even be better. You know, I comment you guys, you're doing a good job. Keep it up. Thank you. The scorecard does look great. Yeah, you guys are doing a good job. Thank you. Um, do you have any um, numbers projected that you wanted to share with us before the March meeting, or you won't really have anything? Oh, oh no. Yeah, I, I, you found a I, 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 Yeah, I don't have any of the numbers off. Off the top of my head to share, sure. but they are uh, they are a stable number that allows us to provide again the same hours of service that we currently provide with an inflation with inflation uh, not the seven percent we're living by, but a, a general inflator that we normally do. Well, so there are numbers here that I yeah. didn't know if it's appropriate for the question now. Yeah. So I, and I'm not prepared to speak to it right okay. now. Um, so well, how about I ask the question and not ask for an answer, and that way you're prepared for more. Okay. <laughs> That's you know That's I'm good. not I'm not looking to be unfair. No, I, I appreciate that. It gives me lots of time to find an answer. Yeah. When when I'm looking at the the pie chart and then the list under it of the operating expense budget. I know that the drivers are up for a contract, mm -hmm. and I'm just curious, the overall budget has an increase of about $13.5 million, and it looks like half that money goes towards operator wages, and there is some stuff about uh, fringe benefits mm -hmm. that was up about a million. Mm -hmm. um, uh, my question is, are we certain or is the negotiation going to be done before the budget that we know that this covers the, the new numbers? Yeah. Because uh, I know this is a projection. Mm -hmm. And uh, that would concern me because I know from what I've heard from drivers that their medical stuff, they pay 80, the company pays 20, and their pension is a 401k, not a real pension, and they're looking for a real increase in salary. Yeah. So I, I don't know if these numbers cover what they're looking for and what's going to get negotiated. Yeah. So that's what raises those thoughts. Yeah, yeah. And, and what I'll say is uh, we've taken into account a reasonable and fair. But, but when you do something like this and print it, doesn't that influence them to say, hey, we want more than that? We know you've got that. We want more. P potentially. Okay. Yeah, I just, you yeah. know. Yeah. But potentially. But again, it, it's not our goal. Our goal is to be reasonable and fair. Oh, I, yeah. I understand that. But mm -hmm. when, you, when you go and you put the banana in front of the monkey, mm -hmm. But, yeah, and, and the monkey yeah. says, you got that. He wants to say, well, you got another one? Right. Right. But, but again, it, that's the, we're a public agency. We have to print and, 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 you okay. know, and, and we have to, everybody uses the tools they can. Let's okay. put it that but way. I'm just, yeah, you know, yeah. those, are, those are my concerns yeah. of what, what I glanced at. Because yeah. when I was here early, I actually. By March, they will be. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. no, but that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm not asking you how to defend the answer now. Right. right. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yes, appreciate it, Joel. And, and we'll I'll report back in June how that all shakes out because that, that the the contract negotiations on the CBA will start in April. 
And when when is the date they expire? Uh, April. Oh, so, so you're going to the deadline to talk? Pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Hey, you know what you're doing, and I just you know think when people talk to me, us, whatever, that we should have some kind of a an answer instead of an I don't know. I appreciate that. Too. Right, but 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 here's. Here's numbers that they put in. I mean, I don't know, but I'm going to speculate they're projected from um, last, the, the previous year's increases, and then they just go by wherever the general percentages are in their contractual agreement for employment. Um, right, but and inflation know, and what people want now is well, I, more. I, I, I would like things too, but I mean, I, I'm bound by, and, you know, yeah. the terms of my I'm, employment. I'm just yeah. no, looking. No, I'm here, I'm here. Totally here. I'm looking into what the, the hard numbers are in front of us. We acknowledge receiving it, so I'm going to I read it. I appreciate it. Okay, so at this time, there's no more questions from the board. We'll move on to any public comments. Uh, uh, oh, you go, go right ahead. Okay. Sir, you have to introduce yourself. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, do we? Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. Joe Torsivia, Levittown, New York. Can you spell your Joe last name? C O R C I V. I Thank you. Now, what's different about this picture since I've been coming here? You're smiling. Well, <laughs> I'm smiling, yes, but I've smiled before. This is the first time I've come without any pre-written notes on things that were wrong or that I would like to see change. Thank you. <laughs> You have, in general and specifically on my route, the N49, you have achieved a level of service that a few years ago I didn't think was ever possible again. And uh, as I say, I come here to speak off the cuff now. I don't have a list of, uh, of bad things to say. <laughs> they're, 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 they're just well done, well done all of you. Um, just one thing, the Saturday service, and I know you have to split it up with the 48, but the Saturday service should at least be our. It always was. And, uh, but just this Sunday, this Sunday in particular, or this weekend, I should say, I had a choice of making a trip on Saturday or Sunday. I naturally went for Sunday because the schedule is more frequent than it is on Saturday. And I just kind of wonder, uh, wouldn't the Saturday schedules need to be more frequent than the Sundays, given ridership and uh, such? But I know, I know you got to split it with the 48, and that's the, way, that's the way it is. So there you are. That's my complaint, and oh yes, there are no posted schedules in Roosevelt Field. And the, the frame where the schedules once were mm -hmm. looks to have been vandalized. We'll look, uh, we'll look at that right away. But I don't need that because <laughs> I use transit. Right, right. <laughs> I appreciate that. Sir. But well done. Thank you all. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, my name is Carl Tanaka. 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 C-A-R-L-P-E-R-R-E-R-A from New Hyde Park. I'm here with uh, I'm a member of Passengers United. And uh, my, my question is, how does the fare revenue work with something like the Metro card? When somebody say they're leaving Long Island and Nassau County, they swipe their card, and then later they swipe it from the subway, and uh, versus the opposite direction, where somebody first tran uh, uses the subway, and then they transfer to the bus. How does the, the revenue get split uh, with so yeah, that yeah. So, yeah, there is a formula that's predestined, predesigned with, with the MTA. And every month we get all the data and they rec reconcile the transfers in that data. Uh, and and uh, either you know we write a check or they write a check and, and, and that's how they're reconciled. Uh, so it, it is it's all through the fare box and for the end the MetroCard Act Strike, it records all that. Uh, and understands uh, that there was a transfer, believe it or not. Uh, it's, it, it doesn't seem like that much technology to be on a piece of paper, but uh, and a mag strike, but there is. 
enough for us to understand that. Okay. Thank you. I, I, I did have another comment though. Yes, what somebody mentioned about UPS, mm -hmm. uh, the service to this whole area in general. Mm -hmm. It uh, it occurs to me there's a lot a lot of congestion in Roosevelt Field. It might make sense to you know um, have like a shuttle route from 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 the video of one on a railroad station. Have a few shuttle routes uh, with more frequent service into from your, from Mineola to Roosevelt Field, because uh, instead of having every route go into Roosevelt Field, and talking about slowing down those routes. Mm -hmm. Maybe if those routes went just like, say, the N24, went from Mineola to Jamaica, and then a, a shuttle route, which operates every five minutes around the clock, mm -hmm. would, would, would do all the turns and all the stuff that, that a bus could get caught in traffic. Yeah. It seemed like, it, uh, like, like two members here were delayed because yeah. at Roosevelt Field, so if they would, if actually, they would, come to Roseville. Field. They come to Roseville yeah. Field. But I'm saying that's where yeah. they came. Yeah. So maybe if there was a shuttle route from Minneola to Roseville Field, and then went into this whole hub area, yeah. went to Roseville Field, the Boulevard, downtown, so terrifying. That whole hub area should be looked at for, for high frequency to the shopping centers and all that. And that would uh, speed up the, uh, the main routes, the trunk routes. Mm -hmm. Thank good. you, Mr. Pereira. Thank you. I'm so sorry. I, I hate doing this, but. We do limit the public comments to two minutes, so we've, okay, gone, a, we've gone quite over that, but I thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'll tune. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, uh, yeah, let Yuki go. Yuki? Yuki? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yuki, where do you want me to start? Mm -hmm. Up here? Mm -hmm. Oh, right here? Okay, very well. Thank you. My name is Yuki Endo, resident of Jackson Heights, Queens, and I represent Passengers United. I hope you guys had a wonderful Christmas and New Year's. I am asking to bring direct N20, N22 buses, as it was because N20 GH riders play dangerous Frogger. N22X should operate more service, but instead of Old Country Road, Country Seat Drive, Willis Avenue, N22X should stop at Old Country Road, 3rd slash 4th Avenues, because it's painful to walk to or from Mineola Station or Mineola Boulevard, 2nd Street to Old Country Road, County Seat Drive, Willis Avenue, it would be easier. And I'll note for the record that there are uh, photographs also depicting this. I enjoy the nice bus mini. This morning on 10.45 a.m., N4 Freeport, number 1878 bus, had MTA fare box broken down. I'm asking nice bus to expand weekend service on nice buses ride mini, especially in the summer. When you say weekend service, you mean just because it's currently Monday through Friday? Is that correct? Okay. Uh, my blind vegan friend from Point Washington also enjoys the mini ride from Merrick Stop and Shop to Nautical Miles N62 bus stop. I would also like to see this expanded on discontinued segment of the N45, N50, N51, N73-74, and N46-47 buses to make either of those as well. I am grateful that you restored the N54-55 back to Abneyville Station. I also like summer N88 weekend trips to be extended to and from the Mineola bus station where Hofstra University and Adelphi University shuttle buses drop off slash pick up. I am also excited for new electrical buses. I also want Nice Bus and MTA to work together to implement Omni readers, OMNY, excuse me, readers since MTA MetroCard will be ending possibly in 2023. I am grateful Nice Bus Ride Mini Bus was introduced but it's not as much of a help since it's not door-to-door -door service. Lindbergh Library is not inside the zone. One of the nice mini riders said they want this to operate on weekends. I would also like the restoration of weekend N27 buses between Glen Hoe and Roosevelt Field Mall because LIRR mainline weekend shutdown without any shuttle buses are making Mineola, Car Place, Westbury, and Hicksville ghost towns. It would be better if this ran on weekends since I'll be able to go to Nautical Mile for shark protests in South Freeport for two seventy five, dollars even though I support a $6 taxi from Taxi New York. N22 local needs to be restored direct bus because many other stations does not have enough space for buses to pull over. I would like to see the N33 bus restored Sunday service as well. Also, Doing USB area events. 
Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, Yugi, I'm going to ask that maybe you can submit the last comments via email or onto um, what's another method of submission? This method. You can okay. take a picture of it. Okay. <laughs> there we go. And I will. Plus, Yugi. Yugi. Thank you, Chief. Okay. Oh, great. Thank you. Okay. Yes, hi. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Charlton D'Souza, and I'm the uh, president of Passengers United. Uh, it's my first time coming to the NICE bus facility. Um, we want to have a meeting with you, uh, with the president of NICE bus. Uh, we have a lot. We, we are getting a lot of complaints. And what was shown here today, I will say the new delicts much, much better. But the problem is, it's, uh, and I spoke to the Vice President as well earlier this afternoon, uh, but we would love to meet with you. Uh, a lot of improvements need to be made. Right now, the number one complaint we're getting is breakdowns. And there is no notifications being put out when there's a breakdown. Um, and this is a serious problem, um, and it has to be addressed um, in, a, you know, in, in a way that the public, the riding public, can understand. Because if you're waiting 25 minutes and two runs are missing, this is a big problem. And people have told me they've been stranded for over an hour and 30 minutes on Sundays. So this on is something, weekends. yes, on the 41 route, which I know the 41 route poses a bunch of issues. Um, and I know you guys are suffering with fare evasion. And I was just at Hempstead, I saw that. Uh, I was not happy with what I saw at Hempstead. I saw people drinking alcohol in the open. Uh, they've got to improve that, and they've got to work with the security. Uh, in terms of the county, uh, since you're the deputy county attorney, we need the county to be able to change the frequency of those traffic lights. Because throughout the county, the buses are getting stuck in traffic, 20 minute delays, 30 minute delays. Nassau County has to do better. And actually, we want to meet with the uh, Nassau County uh, Commissioner. We'd love to meet with her, sit down with her, and you know, just work some things out. Because with MTA, we have a very good relationship with uh, John Lieber. Mm -hmm. We attend all the meetings. Um, in terms of Omni, I did speak to General Lieber about the Omni situation with Nice Bus, and he did tell me that they are working aggressively to try to get that technology in. Um, but obviously, because everything going on with COVID and you know, the supply chains and everything, uh, but we at Passengers United are committed to getting the Omni on the nice buses, we're going to do press conferences, work with the elected Thank officials, you. and get that done. Thank you so much sure. for all of your incredible efforts. We have reached this high limit yes. um, for your comments, but I welcome to our meeting. I hope to see you at more of them. Yeah. Um, I think that you would have a lot of great contributions that can be made, um, and I welcome any other riders. Um, the, 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 the fare skipping, fare evasion has been brought to my attention. Um, I understand that there are people who will get on the bus and just kind of quickly wave their phone and then just run to the back. And uh, for understandable reasons, the drivers are hesitant to, you know, approach or confront. Um, so and that is... One of the drivers was assaulted about a week ago. The door was punched at Hempstead Terminal. Mm -hmm. I saw the video of that. Um, so, you know, we need an open line of communication yeah. with the county mm -hmm. and with the president. So, yeah. we don't have to come here and spill all the dirty laundry. We don't right. want to do no, that. Thank you. Thank you, know, you so much. Right. Thank you. Uh, uh, there, there were some people that made comments with the rerouting of Brooklyn and Queens and Suffolk County. Is there any plan to do rerouting in Nassau? It was approached to me. And I said I hadn't heard one, because I had asked about this about a year ago. Yeah. So, uh, and, and our position hadn't changed. We've spent 10 years adjusting minor adjustments throughout the routing uh, to address uh, a lot of different things and changes in travel patterns. And at this time, we don't really see the value of a complete reimagine, as everybody has kind of branded it, at this point. Um, not to say that something won't happen in the future, uh, we talked a little bit about routing in the hub area. We have a lot of service in the hub area. Um, as the Coliseum gets developed, and I think we saw something in the news today, as a matter of fact, as the Coliseum gets developed, that will uh, spur us to re-engineer the routing in the hub to ensure that Neniola is, is being serviced and Hempstead's being serviced in a frequent 
um, potentially Westbury, uh, but in a frequent manner. So those are the things that really propel us and, and more than anything else. Our ridership was growing before COVID, one of the few, uh, a few uh, systems in the country with growing bus ridership. Um, so I think that tells us a little bit that in the routing is kind of working. Frequency uh, is an important thing, and so we would like to put our efforts into ensuring frequency, uh, potentially restoring some routes that, that we had to leave behind a while ago, implementing more mini, expanding the mini service. Yeah. Uh, so all those things are you know, hopefully in the works and, and uh, at the top of our head. But a, a whole system re redesign, probably not in the way that, that it's been done in the past. So, oh, so I, I got the questions. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Um, the, the other last thing, and I'll leave everybody alone with this final comment is, um, we get very little audience participation. And a lot of people are commenting that maybe we should start the meetings at like seven o'clock and do a little better publicity to get the word out. Well, well, we'll we'll look at everything. Anytime we move a meeting or move it to seven, then we lose some people that can't get here at seven, or we move board members, or you know we lose. So it's it's just a matter of uh, of looking at everything. Just in view of what Joel said, mm -hmm. I first began attending these meetings once I retired <laughs> right. because I could not attend them while I was actively yeah. working. So maybe that'll be something for the board to bring up uh, the next time we have a full uh, full board. So oh, hybrid. Take mm -hmm. it under advisement. Yeah. Yeah. Any other last comments from the board members? I don't think that's okay. You want to hear No. Anything else? All right. Um, any member I think a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All favor? Aye. Aye. All right. This stands adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Yes. Okay, yeah.